Hello Lone Fox family, welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy to have you here. I hope you guys are having a great Sunday so far. Today's video is just gonna be a little bit more of a casual one. My last upload was an intense Ikea cane woven storage TV unit transformation. If you guys did not see that video, I'll put it in a card up here because it was such an incredible project. I love the way that it turned out and I honestly cannot see myself getting rid of this for years. Like it is just perfect. But for today's video, we are gonna be talking about 10 decor hacks that I personally swear by, hacks, tips, tricks, just things that I personally use when designing and styling a room. And last but not least, before jumping in, not only is there one new video today, there are actually two new videos. And some of you guys are like, where's the second video? Well, I actually am going to be posting a second video to my channel today that is unlisted. So if you're watching this, you have access to the video. Basically, the second video is going to be linked at the top of the description box right down here. It's going to be the first link. And this video is just going to be a nice casual little haul video where I share with you guys all the new items from my online store um, in person. Because a lot of the times I share them with you guys on Instagram stories or just randomly here and there. But to be completely honest, I never share my shop here on my YouTube channel ever. I've only ever talked about it a couple of times because I don't want anyone to feel like they're obligated to shop at my store. I don't want anyone to feel like I'm pressuring them to shop at my store or I'm pushing my products in their face. That's why I uploaded a second video today. So if you guys would like a second little video of me just kind of doing a haul style video, sharing with you guys some new items from my online store, including rugs, decor, lovely candles, like this one, my favorite lavender candle in the entire world. There's just a lot of fun stuff. So you could check that out to the link at the top of the description box. But let's go ahead and jump right into today's video of decor hacks. My first little tip slash hack is one that you guys might already know because it's literally the entire preface of my entire channel. And that is to incorporate DIY or handmade decor into your spaces. I personally feel like you can always go to any shop and you can buy something that everyone else has. However, you can always create something that nobody else has, which I love. I think having original pieces of art or original pieces of decor in your space, really make it feel like yourself and your own. So I highly suggest sitting down one day and just crafting up some decor for your room. The great thing about DIY as well is you can really match your very own color palette. You can add more texture when needed. Also over on my site, Lone Fox, I have an entire section that's designated to artisan goods that are handmade, which I really, really love. I'll link that section below for you guys because the goods are just handmade with love and they really, really show. I think they're incredible pieces and that's why I love having them on my site. And of course, you guys can find many DIY videos here on my channel sharing tons of different tutorials on projects from this big to humongous. Something I always get asked is how to fill a blank wall. Like, what should I do with this wall, Drew? I get photos of people's walls all the time and I can't even see the whole room. They send me a wall and I'm like, you know what? You need to put a gallery wall there. And that is something I think everyone should do. And my mom always has come to me and she's like, I don't have a big enough piece of art to fill the space. Like, I need something humongous for above my couch. And she never really thought of the idea to create a gallery wall. She always just felt like she needed to have one big piece of art, which I feel like a lot of people think that way. They're very like, oh, I can only have have one thing here it needs to be big to take up the space however you can easily do 10 things there that are smaller but cluster them together to fill up the space I have a really great tip on how to create a gallery wall and that is to get a ton of artwork a ton of framed prints you like definitely hit up your local thrift stores go online you could find really great inexpensive art prints on places like Etsy or Decenio or even my own website I have a couple that I've designed myself and you could easily frame these art prints and then use a little bit of wrapping paper to create a template for your specific frame also add the hole where the nails going to go. And once you have all of your templates created for all of your framed artwork, you can go over to a wall, use a little bit of tape, tape them up on the wall, and move them around until you find a kind of setup that you personally like. And then when you're completely done, you already have your little nail hole on your template, so you can easily nail right through the template, pull it off when you're done, hang up your gallery wall, and you don't have to put a ton of holes in your wall by testing out the uh, gallery styles throughout your space. So I just think that that gallery wall tip is super, super crucial, and it's something I use every single time I create one. Something else I always 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 get asked is how to hang curtains and you guys I will tell you right now when I first started doing interior design if you will like I always say I am not an interior designer I am not trained in it I just do it for fun here on YouTube and I like helping you guys out but when it comes to curtains there are a couple things that I have learned over the years the first thing is that you want to hang your curtains as high as you possibly can the higher your curtains go the more extended your wall is going to look and just the more grand your space is going to be so if you have pretty short walls to start with you're definitely going to want to hang your curtains 
curtains pretty high and just get a longer curtain that way it meets the floor if you put the curtain rod right above the window and you don't put it higher up and there's like a large gap above the curtain rod in the ceiling that can honestly just look very mediocre and I feel like a lot of people tend to do this especially me I know when I hung curtains a long time ago I just thought it was supposed to go right above the window and you are good to go however just elevating it just a little bit higher almost to the ceiling really really creates a very grand effect and I love the way that it looks and something else that I personally do is if you have just one window on a wall and there isn't much space on the right and left side to do anything with or you don't have stuff to go there for example what I love doing is actually hanging the curtain rod as far as I can out that way when the curtains are open they fill in those little random gaps on the sides of the windows and again it elevates your window but it also widens your window again a 360 perfect combo for your windows is where it's at now jumping into a little bit of color theory here so I love designing with contrasting colors contrasting colors are always really amazing so if you guys remember my dining room makeover I did that really really dark navy wall but something that I did to kind of create a pop and just a little bit of interest to that space was incorporate some terracotta planters within the navy wall because orange and blue are contrasting colors and this does not mean you need to have some bright orange and some bright blue as you guys can see here I use a super super dark unsaturated navy with a very dark kind of rustic unsaturated orange and together they mesh perfectly but they really really contrast and create a really nice visual interest no pun intended. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pop up a color wheel on the screen for you guys. So how you're gonna read this is the color that you're looking at, for example, let's say you wanna design with the color yellow. Now the color opposite, the color yellow, is a contrasting color. So let's just say you wanna go with like a marigold kind of sunflower yellow color, but you wanna have a nice contrasting punch to the space. The contrasting color in this case is purple. So maybe including like an eggplant or an unsaturated purple tone could be nice. However, that kind of screams a little bit Lakers. Alongside red and green, it screams very Christmas. So sometimes it doesn't work because the eye tends to think Christmas or think Lakers or think this or that. However, you can get away with it sometimes in the terms of how I did with the navy and the rustic orange. So think about contrasting colors colors when you're adding them to spaces. Another question I get asked quite a bit is about rug size. Now, rug size is totally determined on your personal space. So for a bedroom space, for example, I always think that the rug should go towards the end of the bed for sure. You never really want it going all the way up towards the top. It's just not aesthetically pleasing. Um, so I like to put it about halfway underneath the bed at least. And traditionally, an 8x10 rug is always perfect for really any bed size, like a king bed or a queen bed. I actually have an 8x10 rug under my full size bed. Um, but if you do have a smaller size, bed you can definitely go with a five by eight which will save you a bit of money I feel like almost every living room typically needs a six by nine or an eight by ten rug shameless plug I have an entire line of rugs on my website now that are such incredible prices you guys they are amazing and they come in like five different sizes as well I absolutely love them so if you're looking for a new rug definitely check that out but for a living room I traditionally think an eight by ten rug is where it's at um, if you have the space for it because you're gonna want it to go a little bit underneath your couch you're also gonna want any accent chairs to kind of rest on the edges of it and then of course your coffee table is going to go right in the middle of it something you guys see me always 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 design with whether it be faux or real is plants i absolutely love plants and i think every single space always needs at least two plants like plants are where it's at they really add life to a space they add vibrancy they just add a bit of airiness always i think they're so perfect you can literally hate the color green but you will never hate a plant in your space like something about plants are almost neutral like they're not even a color green is not there it's just perfection so I think plants are amazing for any space and not only plants but natural elements as well such as wicker wood stone rattan marble there are tons of different natural elements that can just bring a little bit of the outdoors inside which I think is really really crucial it almost just creates a bit of airiness inside your home a super easy fix to anything is spray paint this is amazing for any outdated decor any thrifted decor any decor you might not like anymore that kind of rhymes. Grab a bottle of spray paint. I'm going to link some of my favorite spray paints in the description box for you guys below. I love the Rust-Oleum Matte Farmhouse Black. That's one of my favorite ones. As many of you guys know, I'm obsessed with the terracotta spray paint I recently found. And I also have a couple of colors that I really, really love, which I'll link those below for you guys. An easy coat of spray paint is such a great way to give new life to a old piece of decor. So for example, maybe you have this little figurine, you don't really like it anymore. Give it a coat of copper spray paint or brass spray paint and make it look more metalized 
supplies. You can even use spray paint to update furniture pieces, such as drawer pulls on a dresser. Um, I spray painted the white legs on my Ikea desk and made them matte black to match the mirror that I also spray painted from Ikea. Let's say you need a little bit more of this color in your room or a little bit more of that color. You could spray paint a decor piece, plop it on the shelf, and there you go. Rolling into our next little tip, this is one that I also love using and I think that it's super useful. It's practical and it's pretty. And this is to add a mirror to a space. So let's just say, for example, you have a smaller bedroom or you have a room with only one window. Mirrors are really, really great at reflecting light or making a room appear larger than it actually is. So let's just say, for example, I had a window right here and I had nothing on this wall over here. Applying a mirror over on this wall is going to bounce the light from the window throughout the space and just make it appear brighter and airier and just overall a little bit nicer. Plus, everyone could use a mirror because first of all, you can get a very decorative one, which adds just a decorative element to your space. And on top of that, you can use it to get ready, get dressed, whatever it might be. So it's practical, it's functional, and it's pretty. Jumping into our second but last tip, this one's a little bit more one that you kind of have to think about when you look at your space. So it might be a little bit more challenging. However, I swear to you, it is not. And this is to be decorate with odd numbers. That's part one of this. So let's just say you have a console that you want to decorate on. You want to put some things on top of it. I always feel like clustering decors in like one, three, five, seven odd numbers typically just appears better on the eye. It just looks better in my opinion. And also creating offset looks is really nice. So if you have one taller vase, don't get three tall vases, get a taller vase, a medium vase, and a small vase. And the second half of this tip, which kind of relates back to the other one, um, comes in when it comes to color. And this is using the rule of thirds to decorate with color. So let's say you have a living room and your primary colors in there are really earth tones. So you have tans, browns, um, whites and blacks, so on and so forth. But you also have an accent color of, let's just say rust orange. That's like your color and you like it in the space. You kind of want to create at least a triangle with your decor. So let's just say you have a throw pillow here. You have an accent chair that's rust orange here. You also want a vase maybe over on the TV console that's also orange. That way you can kind of connect them all together and it looks a little bit more cohesive than having only one touch of orange in the space. So, And of course this tip does not have to apply to every single decor style or every single bedroom. However, if you are one that struggles with like color or adding to a space, that's a great tip to follow. However, that rule is always broken now and then by amazing designers. So I'm not going to say that it has to be followed for sure. But if you are starting out, you might want to think about um, rule of thirds when it comes to adding color to a space. And our last and final hack of this video is soft goods go a long way. Now, what exactly are soft goods? These are just honestly things that are soft. So things like throw pillows this is actually an amazing macrame throw pillow from my website. I freaking love these. Um, those are really, really great. You can just go all out with soft goods, throw blankets, curtains, wall hangings that might have like a macrame touch to them. Um, things like throw pillows. They're all really great to add to a space and it overall all just makes the vibe a little bit cozier. So if you're looking at a room and you're like, this kind of just feels cold. It doesn't feel like an inviting space. Typically you need some more soft goods or some more texture in that space. So incorporating something like a chunky knitted blanket. This one was from my friend Peony and Honey. She made this for me. It is so cozy and soft, but imagine this, this instantly elevates your couch, just makes it look a little bit more inviting. And then a couple of throw pillows and you are good to go. But guys, I feel like I've been talking for a long time. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I definitely hope it can give you a couple of tips and tricks when it comes to decorating your space in the future, whether it be a living room, a bedroom, a dining room. Now, do not forget that I posted a second video today. Again, it is going to be linked at the top of the description box below. It is just a casual little fun haul of all of the new items available on LoneFox.com. And if you have not already checked out my online shop, it is LoneFox.com. I'll link it below for you guys. I also have a blog over there that I post on at least once a week with additional content that you guys never even see here. I don't even think I've talked about my blog on the channel. That is how much I just am never self-promoting myself. I don't know why I don't do it, but I just don't want you guys to think I'm like pushing things in your face. So if you would like to check it out, links are in the description box below, but I'm going to go ahead and catch you guys in my next video. Have an amazing rest of your day. Stay safe out there and I'll catch you next time. Bye guys.